Berthold LB472 Setup and Calibration The installation is complete. The shutter is in the open position and the system is powered up. If you notice that the count rate field on your home screen is displaying zero, ensure that the positive terminal in the cabinet is connected to the number one terminal in the detector and that the negative terminal in the cabinet is connected to the number two terminal in the detector. If this is all correct, but you still have zero CPS, please contact Berthold Service for help diagnosing the issue. Let's proceed. You'll notice on the home screen the arrow tab in the lower right corner. We will refer to this as forward. And the arrow tab in the lower left corner will be referred to as back. In the upper left corner is the Home tab. This will return you to the home screen throughout the program. In the upper portion of the right side is the Error Handling tab. This will typically have a green icon in normal operation, a red icon when the system is not measuring due to an error, and a blue icon when the system is measuring but a condition exists that needs attention. In this case, the unit is not calibrated. So let's proceed further. Forward. Device Setup. Identification. Location. Here we can assign a name for this specific gauge, Location, by clicking Edit and entering the proper designation. We're going to just call this Belt 1 back and back again. Setup System Date and Time Here we can make the proper adjustments to our date by selecting the drop-down menu and finding the correct setting. The time can be adjusted by selecting the incorrect field and making corrections with the arrows to the right. The LB472 will automatically adjust your calibration every day based on the decay of the source for that day. So selecting the proper date, time, and isotope have a direct impact on the continued accuracy of the gauge. We will talk more about the isotope later. Click Apply, then Back. Units. Here you will ensure that the proper units have been selected from the drop down menus for each measurement for your specific application. Back, back, inputs, analog inputs. AI Mapping. Here you will select the constant speed. In the assignment window, you will edit the constant speed at which your belt travels. We will set our speed to 3 feet per second, simply for this demonstration. If you are using a variable speed belt, select which type of tack input you will be providing, either on a head drive or a wheel riding along the belt, with the proper settings for such. Back, back, and back again. Calibration, calibration settings. Here we have access to all the settings for our calibration. Let's start with background. You will only want to read in the background if your source has not yet been installed so you can get an accurate measure of the natural background. If your source is already installed, simply leave this field zero. Select belt width. We will want to measure the actual area where your material will be laying on the belt for this setting, if it's an open belt, or simply the internal width for a drag conveyor.
select tear rate. It's best to measure your tear based on the time it takes your belt to make three complete revolutions at the minimum. Enter that amount of time in the field. We're using 20 seconds for our demonstration. Click Start. You'll know the status bar is showing as it's making its progress through the tear measure. Once time has elapsed, we will click OK. Select Nuclide from the table and ensure you have the correct isotope selected as we alluded to earlier. We will have cesium-137 for this application. Select PV range. Zero to 150 for this demonstration. This setting will set the scaling for your 4 to 20 milliamp output. So we're setting our upper range for 150. and we've left our lower range at zero. We want to make sure that these settings relate to what the DCS or PLC is expecting to see on the other end of this output. Which brings us to the table. You'll notice since this is a new setup there are no calibration points in the table. We will create a new one by pressing the plus. We are now ready to either measure a known load that will be fed onto the belt or be prepared to capture what material we pass through the scale for a comparison weighing after. Note, for accuracy of the calibration, you will need to use a minimum of 20% of the full loading. So, if your full loading is expected to be, say, 200 tons per hour, you will need to use a minimum of 40 tons for the calibration. I am watching the belt as full loading of the material reaches the detector and source that are located on the belt. and we press start as soon as it reaches the devices. Let this continue to run until we see the full loading of material has passed by all the devices. We do not want to continue measure all the tailings as material trails off. This is mostly a judgment based on experience as to when to stop the measurement as measuring low or irregular loading will skew our calibration. So our material is still passing through the device. We see the trailing edge approaching and as it starts to trail off we stop. Press OK. You will now notice the information has been added to the table. But we have one more thing to do. Before we leave, we'll click the Edit button. And we'll tell the device exactly how much material passed through. We're going to say one ton for this demonstration. And then select OK. Press back. 
Calibrate. Calibrate again to enter this measurement as measurement set 1. Calibration is successful. We can hit the home button. And now we should see our gauge start climbing to approximately 60 tons per hour as we have simulated on this demonstration. From the home screen you'll notice the middle box on the right side of the display. Selecting it brings you into the trends screen. You can toggle through the trends for your CPS, detector temperature, mass counter, and bulk flow using the arrows below. And you can return to the main screen by pressing the same middle box on the right side. This concludes our calibration.